Democratic opinion, does the focus on rumor reporting, rampant speculation, fan casting, and nonsense like that Trouble. in the film press damage the aesthetic experience of movie going? Mm. Does it actually hurt the form as an art form? I think it depends on your audience, James. I, I, I don't know if labeling it as nonsense is, is completely fair. Um, my, my opinion on the matter is, and this goes back to kind of, do we chase the rumors? Do we post things we're not certain of? Um, know your audience, I think, in a, in a way. Um, but isn't it tedious for your audience when 90% of rumor stories just have to wait 24 hours to be disproven, and during that 24 hours only provide SEO and hit I mean, value? I think, <laughs> I don't think that's a way of looking at it for every site. And I think that there's, you know, and this is coming from me having, uh, you know, I was a young boy once. I read these sites, man. And I, I like reading some of that stuff. It's entertaining, especially if that's your audience. If the audience you're writing for is, is waiting for these announcements, is waiting for every little bit of information, it's part of the fun. It can be part of the fun. And I know that sounds kind of incredibly <laughs> stupid from a, journalism point of view, but in, in some ways there's sites that exist that do this. They're part of the getting excited for it. It's not just the straight up journalism, is this true, is this not? They're not the traits. Well, uh, I mean, what's, what purpose does it serve when you're getting people excited for a movie that's not cast or written or shot yet? I mean, what's he saying like these are five people who might be uh, Wolverine if Hugh Jackman drops out or something? I mean, if it's, I, I just don't know. The fans yeah. do get very caught up. They do, and, but and that's the point. Something you're doing like for the Hunger Congress. Games, for yeah. example, you know, Jennifer Lawrence versus whatever. You just have to couch it the right way and, and, yeah. and say what's real and, and what isn't real. Um, but I am horrified by one thing. Like, if you go to Comic Con and they've shown some footage from a movie that hasn't even been shot yet. <laughs> you, you didn't love the Avengers trailer last year? You, you know, and, you're, you, and there's a round table, there's a junket backstage, and Collider Frosty is asking questions about trying to figure out the plot by putting this actor and this, this was, this was all Iron Man, it was like Robert Downey, Scarlet, you know, you're trying to figure out the plot for the movie. This is journalism? I, but he but knows that's what his fans want. Necessarily journalism, right. That's what his fans want. Right. But I mean, do we, do we burn him for that? I don't know. I don't know if we. I know. We, I know. I know. Some of us in this room do. Right, no, but I mean, that has its place, and unfortunately, we have to live at the same table as that sometimes. But I don't know if it's our job to shame those guys for doing that, and I don't think it. You know, sometimes I see these big guys on Twitter policing the world that we live in, and I don't know if that's fair, um, because I know that you guys have more context, and you can get the scoop on this story. You can get the real information, but if I'm a little guy or if my site kind of lives on that fantasy casting stuff, is that wrong? The thing is, they I, want that. I don't think anybody's mistaking that for journalism, but I think that that's probably reported by an outlet who otherwise wants to feel like they have some sort of journalistic credibility when it comes to breaking real news. It's like, oh, we might have given you a list of five random names just because we thought it'd be cool, but by the way, when we break a real scoop, we want you to trust us. So I think, you know, there is a place for it, but it really shouldn't be mixed in with what should be allegedly factually reported. A follow-up. Just a follow-up. <laughs> a, a simple yes or no question. You hypothetically get access to the entire plot line of an upcoming summer blockbuster you know your readers care about. You know that you could turn illuminating every detail of the plot into a story, thereby gain traffic. Would you do that? Yes or no? Is this always a traffic game? Posted the Oscar show. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon? I'm sorry. No, no, no. Um, Nikki Fink posted the Oscar show. Yeah. yeah. But I, as an actual, I would but, not. But actual journalist, not Nikki Fink. <laughs> America's favorite email forwarder. Would you actually do it? To be fair, James, I think you're I think you're you're going after the SEO, you know, traffic goal a little too much. I don't know if all these sites that do this are under that thinking. I don't think a lot of the people understand yeah. the SEO. I mean yeah. those people aren't webmasters. <laughs> exactly. Just, you know, freelancers and reporters and they're just reporting what they hear. Well, if it's not about the SEO, don't you have a duty to try and get it right and slow down the rumors then? You mentioned earlier about rumors get people excited, and I know that for some reason, 13-year-olds going to read Dark Horizons, it's just going to happen. But don't we <laughs> have it, what? don't we hold ourselves to a higher standard? Don't we want to, on our websites, report something that's accurate? If you really, if most people aren't webmasters and aren't focusing on the SEO, shouldn't we wait 12 hours and report something real? Can you? 
Yes, you can. Yes. Can you wait 12 hours and not die? I'm sure you can. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, your, your, your point was really interesting because you said you want to you want to deal with getting people excited about it, and that's part of the fun of the movies. But isn't it our duty to, if we're going to report on something, report accurately and get them excited about the real thing or for the right reasons? Yeah, but even if we do that, uh, we can't guarantee that the rest of the internet. Does. Exactly. Yeah, that's Scott, what do you have to well, say? Just to add an interjection real quick. Over the last <laughs> month, um, I, I was at, I, I've been given assignments at Cinematical, one per day. They wanted me to write some stories, and they said, if you want, we can send you the ones we'd like covered. Because you're, you know, I said, great, no problem. And then I, I honestly don't remember what the details were, most people know. But the Vulture ran uh, an exclusive one night, and I said, great, I'll write it up, no problem. I found out the next morning, complete bullshit. I, and I put in my piece, for all we know, this could be an overzealous uh, intern from a competing studio where, who posted this gossip. The next day, another editor said, Scott, could you write this up from Vulture? And I said, I'm never quoting Vulture again. You never asked me. They burned me in 10 hours. I'm never even going to do this again. So if I can do that, I'm going to do it anyway. Anybody can do it. I mean, anybody can do it. It's not, I mean, it is professionalism, but it's also just easier to stick with people you trust. Dan, did you have something else you wanted to say? Well, yeah, I think Will said it. I said, don't we have a duty to hold ourselves to a higher standard? And somebody said, yeah, but the rest of the internet won't do that. Who cares? Yeah. Shouldn't we do it anyway? If there's people out there being hacked, shouldn't we still try and hold ourselves to like Well, here's a question. Part? And it's not something, I, I, we'll do a scenario and it's not a rumor. Say that um, a trailer is posted, like a, an unreleased, unofficial trailer, and every other site runs it. What if my site doesn't run it? And everyone else has seen it on uh, on their tweets, and they go to every site. But every single site, except Gordon and the Whale, doesn't have it. Is it out of bounds to think that our readership will think that we're somehow not on the ball, or do we need to say, like, send out a Is tweet? It's an official trailer. Or it's an like? unofficial trailer. It's <laughs> no, yeah. and you don't run it, and you say, "We'll wait till we get the official assets," not because it's how we play it, but because we want the real deal. We don't want bootlegs on our site. But the other thing is, is if everybody else has run something. Yeah you might as well run something yes. else. I mean, the bottom line is the original content is going to get the best traffic anyway. If you didn't catch the news cycle, if you didn't surf the wave at that moment, don't you, well, no, that's you know, the perfect, subject of our panel, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, because the original content is always going to get the most yeah. traffic. <laughs> Let's face it, if you sit here and say the Comic-Con clip from Thor leaked, uh, people are going to go find it, whichever sites opt to run it instantly, and a lot of people hesitated, and rightfully so, because it was the property of Paramount, and it was not officially released. But the thing is, there are sites that are just like, you know, there's always going to be one guy out there who's just like, I'm not about this. And that site suddenly has like, uh, you know, 500 more readers than I've ever had before that will keep checking in because the next time that something exclusive or, you know, unofficial leaks, the, they'll have it. I, I don't 